Welcome to the car guys and you join us for another one of our six monthly Q&A sessions where we ask you to send us as many questions as possible about the car guys, about cars, about the car industry, anything you can think of. And we will attempt to not answer any of them with any sense whatsoever. Yeah, just for our own amusement. It's pouring with rain, we are stuck here in a Mercedes SLS Roadster. We can't do any filming, but we can do this filming. We've had hundreds of replies to our request for questions and we're going to try and give you as honest answers as we possibly can like we always do starting now so here we are we're in the sls we've got rain pouring down let's answer some questions craig varty asks have manufacturers already made their best cars Oh, good question. Well, that depends on what you determine as best, I suppose. Yes, yes, uh, they have. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Most fun, most connected, best engine noises, no nanny state, no particulate filters, no tracking nonsense, no more safety devices. Yeah, the best cars have already been made, in my opinion. If you like that kind of thing. However, if EV's your bag, then no. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Dan Dot Street asks, whilst on a date, have you ever subtly put a Ferrari keyring on the table? No, because I've never owned a Ferrari, but you have. <laughs> I've owned a Ferrari, but I have never done that. Koenig Cars asks, what's your worst car buying experience? Oh, that's a toughie. Um, I think probably buying a Fiat Strada 105 twin cam with no clutch and having to drive it two hours and stop eight times while the engine boiled over. And for me, it would be buying a 997-911 Turbo S uh, where I was almost bought the car. I was just about to finalise it with the dealer and the dealer just sold it uh, without telling me. What, Porsche? Yeah. Dealer? Yeah. Underselling you? Unbelievable. Unbelievable, but true. Wassel writes, uh, anything you want to rant about? Oh, God, I Russell. mean, where do we start, quite frankly? <laughs> yes, obviously, but we don't really want to blow our wad right now. We'll save it up for full episodes later. Correct. Modern Classic says, do you think we'll still be able to drive normal cars in the electric future? Yes. Yes, I think so. Let's pray for Porsche's synthetic fuel solution because hopefully that will save us all and we can just put that in our tanks and drive all the normal cars we've got, but just synthetically. Yeah, and you have to remember there are 11 billion normal cars in the world and they're not just suddenly going to be taken off the road in 2032. Not happening. And the last thing we want in, a, in an electric future is to go around in our little white bubbles like neutered eunuchs, all obeying everything and just going about our way in a lovely electric environmental future. Targa Florio says, Damien, have you fallen out of love with Ferrari given your recent videos? What are you talking about? I did a video, first look video on the 812 Competizione. Yeah. Uh, no one else no one else had that. I managed to get it out first. It was a week before Shmi150 got his video out. Admittedly, his got 10 times as many views as mine. Only 10. <laughs> but I still I still managed to do quite a, quite an impassioned view, first look at that car. Um, obviously, I looked at the Roma. That was quite a nice balanced view. I've got, hopefully, uh, a ride in an SF90 at some point to come. The simple answer is, of course, I haven't fallen out with Ferrari. I still absolutely love them. Um, it's just that I've been a little bit concerned over some of the things that have happened recently. But equally, there are also some very exciting things as well. Would you like to see an episode on the future of Ferrari? Would you like to see an episode on whether Ferrari are making too many cars? Would you like to see that? Leave comments. Do you guys hang out together other than filming the car, guys? No. No, not at all. No. Hate him. Hate him. No. Literally can't it's a nightmare. Outside. He's on the other side of the country, for God's sake, so it's very difficult to actually hang out. Hang out. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean by hanging out? Hang out on park benches? In hang the woods? In gents' toilets? I mean, what do you mean? Oh, good Lord. The short answer is not very much because Jason's on one side of the country and I'm on the other. Can you test drive the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio? 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. I um, I have a path into one, and that will be coming to the channel fairly shortly. Robert Denton asks, seeing as we haven't seen Jason for ages, what's his collection like now? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, I've added to the piles of rusty heaps that are ever, not ever going to go anywhere in the next six years of my life. Yeah, pretty horrible. Still yeah, very, very horrible. Yeah, I'm up to twelve cars now. Jeez, really? Yeah. Oh my god. And I think only four of those are actually serviceable. Are you going to tell the ladies and gentlemen like what new ones you've got, or are you going to well, save got, those? Uh, I'll save it. Let's we'll do a garage update. John Doc Keith Motors asks, "How do you feel about electric cars?" Yeah, I think we've covered this lots of times before, John. But uh, they they have their purposes i mean the thing is is they're lump of cars if you just got to move around and go from a to b then then absolutely why not why wouldn't you do that it's quiet it's easy to drive you got all of the you know cool stuff but it's just doesn't there's no passion there you might as well ask us what we think about dishwashers yeah it's a, it's a, it's, it's a commodity thing it is a dishwasher it's another white good i mean i know i say that we're going to do an ev episode in the future and we will but it does require quite a lot of research just to make sure that we get it all get our ducks in a row make sure we, we're speaking properly but i have to say from doing the research i don't have anything against evs per se the actual vehicles themselves it's more to do with the politics and in some cases the people involved barry ferreira asks would you ever do a youtube episode uh, bigging up other youtubers perhaps smaller ones that are trying to get going yeah i think absolutely it's certainly something we've talked about doing we want to help you know where we can give people a little bit of a boost and and show you guys you know other things that we're interested in watching and it's not all necessarily cars either but just in case you hear cars in the background by the way viewers that's because we're in a very popular dogging spot <laughs> i churchill 55 says is there a chance of having another japanese car in the garage well, that technically there already is. There already is. Technically, I already have one. This one. This I one's done it. One. Yeah, absolutely. Love a love a bit of JDM nonsense. Why is that car flashing its lights at us? <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. What does it mean? I don't know it's what it SOS. means. It's SOS. It's International Sign Language. Is it? Yeah. Cammy Reed asks, how do you stay motivated or deal with the bad times? We don't have bad times. We're the car guys. We're literally living the dream. Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> Stoke 999 asks when is a Bugatti coming to the channel when someone gives us 5 million quid yeah when that happens when we set up a patron and everyone gives us a, and 5 million people give us a quid yeah then definitely definitely yeah. you, you have our pledge that we will do that yeah, then yeah 100% mm. definitely might even buy two because there's nothing more <laughs> careful! Oh, I know, I careful! Can't, I, can't, I can't say it. Careful! Because there's nothing wrong at all with someone who definitely has a vast amount of money setting up a patron. Stop it! <laughs> Gregor at Cars says, "Which do you love uh, more, cars or watches?" Cars. Cars. D M Reynolds asks, "Is the 993 considerably lighter in feel?" than the 991. Do you know what? Actually, not so much. Not as much as you think, because obviously the 993 is the four-wheel drive, so everything is a bit heavier in the four-wheel drive compared to obviously the rear-wheel drive GT3 Touring. So, no, not as much as you'd think. The Dan Marshy asks, is there a place in the Car Guys garage for an SF90? No. Well, hang on. No. Because apparently they're really good. Now, I haven't driven one yet. Hang on a minute. Let's rewind back to, I don't know, whichever video that we did, when someone said, I'm not buying that pile of crap, it's far too expensive, they slotted it in where they shouldn't have done, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I won't go into the full rank, because frankly, we're already 10 minutes into this video. So, you said no. Well, I haven't driven one yet. I've only seen it. And it's got electric hybrid? It does have some of no. that. Yeah, I think it's unlikely, the Dan Marshy. I'll tell you what, However, Dan, I would like to still drive one. I'll tell you what, Dan, if Ferrari cancels it tomorrow... The answer is definitely yes. Yeah, I'd be in there like a shot, wouldn't I? <laughs> Will you be going live on YouTube? 
No, we're no. not very good at live. No, live no. is very dangerous for us because yeah. A, we swear too much. B, we drop in many, many inappropriate things, which potentially would be the end of the car, guys. Yeah, as we know it. We make obscure references to 70s and 80s television shows and movies, which literally nobody is going to get. Exactly. And many of those people we're referring to have since been sent to jail. <laughs> Operation U Tree literally stripped <laughs> us of all our material. And also, we prefer to have control of the quality. So, going live, you obviously get lots of sound cutouts, you get poor quality of visuals, uh, whereas we like to have total control of the quality to make sure that it is as high as possible. What car buying decision do you think each other made a mistake with? Ooh, That's Christ. a good one, isn't That's it? That's a really good one. That is a good one. Well, I mean, for Jason, I would say the majority of cars that he's purchased. <laughs> have been a massive, <laughs> massive mistake. You only have to look at his history to find out. History will bear me out on this. But I have to say, there are very few cars in Jason's history or current collection where you go, yeah, respect, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That did make that a bit easy, really. I mean, the GR Yaris was a good move. You ordered that before anyone even knew what it was, before yeah. the whole world on YouTube ordered Exploded. one. You had yours absolutely first, so you totally called that. Mm. It's definitely there. Some of the cars that you've got recently, though, eh, not so much. Oh, awkward. The 488. Oh, what, the original? The, the red one. Well, I had to, I had to I know buy you that. had to buy it. I know you had to buy it, but it was still a bit donkey, wasn't it? What was what was donkey about it? Well, it's just it was it wasn't as good as the four five eight. Yeah, it was a new car. It just wasn't as good. Really enjoyed your BMW three liter CSL review. Thank you very much. Uh, would we ever review the brand new M three or M four? No, it just doesn't do anything for me at no, all. No. It's too Essex. I know lots of people. I mean, we wouldn't get given one anyway because no. obviously we got no profile. But I'm just not that interested in them. I have no. to say. M2 though. Oh, on in a second, yeah. Gasoline Culture does some fantastic stuff on Instagram. Asks, what's the most beautiful car of all time? Oh Jesus! Now you're asking. Mm. Oh, it's just so many. I mean, Jaguar E-Type, 300 SL Gullwing, Lamborghini Chitty Mura. Chitty bang bang. No, definitely not that. <laughs> Lamborghini Mura for me. Yeah, Bentley R-Type Continental, Lancia Aurelia. It's, it's just, too big. Too, too big a question. Too big a question. Dan Reed Jazz asks: Is the six seven five LT the closest thing to a Ferrari F forty? Mm, uh, no, no, it's the closest thing to a six seven five LT. They are completely different beasts. I'll tell you what was pretty close to a F forty was the Noble M six hundred. Yeah, that's closer. That was close because it it feels like it's been put together by engineers and not you know like a full production f1 team the the 675 is on a whole new different level it's too it's too it's way too well built it's it still, needs to be a bit rougher to be yeah. like an f4 jamjar 1010 says do we wish that we started youtube earlier uh yeah about 12 years ago yeah that would have been good yeah, yeah. just before really that shmee guy yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Too True asks, for the love of all that's holy, when are we going to find out about the F40 replacement? Now, ah, interesting, interesting. Um, are you still on about that, really? Does yeah, anyone never, care? Does never. anyone care about that? No. Well, I'll let you into a little secret. The F40 replacement was going to come last year. And then it didn't. And it, and it didn't because I Bottled had it. to cancel it. So Bottled it. Yeah. So it was coming. It was a real physical thing made out of metal, and and I had to get rid of it. Well, so mostly carbon fibre, but yeah. Now I've got to think of something else. So watch this space. But it almost came, but for many many reasons, it didn't. Performante or Evo rear wheel drive? Oh, interesting. Uh, I would say. Evo rear wheel drive? I think Evo, yeah, because at least you've got a bit of action going on, whereas the Poffermonte with its four wheel drive is so stuck to the ground. I mean, it just goes everywhere. There's no slippy, slidey action going on. Rob Simpson 87 asks Do either of you wash your own cars? Wash? Wash them? Wash a can you, washer cup. Can back. you wash them? Um, yeah, when you take it out in the rain. Do people do yeah, that? Yeah, I do drive my cars in the rain. Hmm. Okay, yeah. No, all joking aside, I do wash my cars very, very occasionally, but I suck at it. So it's much better 
to get someone proper to do it because I am horrible when it comes to washing cars. Paul M. Music asks, car you regret the most selling? Discovery. Discovery? <laughs> I don't regret selling any of my cars, but mostly because my cars, are they're not exactly... <laughs> my collection isn't, isn't, you know... Go back and have a look at my car history episode, right? And then you'll see, then you then re-ask that question. Then you will understand. Yeah. There's your Skywalk. Uh, yeah. I would say my first ever 911, the 993 Carrera. That's probably the one. That's probably the one. Oh. Has the TDF sold yet? Yes, quite a long time ago. And actually, it's just been sold again. This year, we've got a potentially exciting F1 battle going on. Are either of you watching Formula One? Mm, no. A little no. bit. A little no, bit. not really. I don't know. No, a little bit. No. No. New Ferrari 812 Competizione or 599 GTO? I've not driven a 599. I have driven a super fast. Super fast. 812 Competizione. Mm. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, John. Zach Morse, who presumably is a distant cousin of Inspector, <gasps> asks, have either of you had a TVR experience? Yes. Oh. I've driven a... Um, I've driven a Chimera. And a Tuscan. The Tuscan was wild. Felt like um, felt like like a caterum with a proper engine in it. it How was, far did you get? Well, I mean, I got to the first roundabout in the yeah. stone cold dry. I tried to drive around it, and then the thing tried to swap ends on me. Um, the Chimera was amazing. Sounded incredible, lovely bur V8 burble, but would never ever own one, old or new. I went out for a drive in a Griffith 500 once, Ooh. which I have to say did did change me. I've always wanted one, but I saw one quite recently. Not so good. No. Not so good. No. Time has not been kind to that car. One car, one mountain road. Which do you choose? Oh, Jesus. Do we have to own the car? No. Oh. This is a good job for you. Yeah. Well, no, I'd take the tour, but every minute of every day. Oh, well, there you go. That's the best yeah. answer, surely. Yeah. I mean, actually... Out of the 458 Aperta and the 488 Pista, I think, on a good mo mountain road, I think I'd rather take the Pista. Exige350 asks, now that Jason's back, will he be doing all the hand modelling? <laughs> yes. No more sausage fingers, people. Would you stop talking about my sausage fingers? I'll get a complex. <laughs> Best all-round car for around about 30, 35... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were Sorry. casting a spell then. <laughs> I couldn't hold it back. I couldn't hold it back. Be gone! <laughs> you Demon. shall not pass! Best all round daily car for around about thirty to thirty five thousand pounds. She's a sort of money. You can have a daily for three hundred quid. What's the matter with you? I'm only passing on. Um G R Yaris. Yeah, I wouldn't have that. It depends on the size of your family and brood and all that other kind of well, stuff. You could have variables. an RS, Audi RS6 for that. Yeah. No problem. Too many variables. RS4, if you don't need a particularly big one. Yeah, something like that. Owen GWT asks, any plans to modify the GT3 Touring? Not really. The only thing I would modify is possibly that bracket thing you can do to make the bucket seat recline back a little bit, because it's quite upright. Other than that, it's perfect. Jaggy Snake asks... Which car of Jason's would Damien like in his garage and... The other way round. The other way round. Oh, that's very easy, isn't it? What are you having, then? I'm having the 675. Oh, are you? Yeah. Bloody hell. Well, you got rid of the F14 and then you got rid of the TDF, so I'm down to the 675, aren't I? Yeah. Because yep. the Giardo, as much as I love it, I can't afford the dentist builds. Uh, probably, for me, it would be uh, the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. Mm. Here's an interesting question. Will Jaguar exist in five years' time? <gasps> that is a great question. Wash your mouth out. That's a great man. question. But no, hopefully not. Oh, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Oh, come on. They've jumped on the whole EV. Oh, we're only going to make EV cars bandwagon. Do you know that's why? Because no one's buying their other crap. I'm not sure that their product lineup or range is of any real interest to anyone anymore. They're not building big you know, luxury saloon cars. The lesser models are a bit <sighs> naff. Personally, there's nothing exciting coming out of Jag at the moment. And that includes things like the I-Pace, which they're killing Yeah. as well. They're killing the i They're going EV, and the only EV car they've got, they're killing. 
I think it is a shame because obviously it's a historic company, but it is uh, the thing that bodes well. I think is that the, is the quality of what they did. So their first efforts in EV were exceptionally good cars. So perhaps the one that they're going to bring out is going to be good, but I don't think it looks particularly brilliant for them at the moment. Timon Botha asks, is there a car that you're excited to drive, but then it was a big disappointment? Oh, that's an interesting question. I would say for me, it was the Porsche 968 Club Sport. Always wanted to drive one. Didn't think that much of it. I think for me, it was the S the um, McLaren... Um, Mercedes, Mercedes SLR Mc McLaren. Yeah, I could never which, remember which way around that goes. Mm. Yeah, I was absolutely desperate to drive that I was so excited and then you know obviously the noise is still amazing but everything else about it was god awful thanks for watching this Q&A session hope you found it interesting hope you found it useful <laughs> which you're gonna none of that's happened but we hope you found it entertaining <laughs> entertaining if nothing else. yeah that's it yeah hope you found it entertaining and there'll be another Q&A session in six months so get your questions ready and no silly ones this time. If you like what we're doing on the channel please subscribe, leave comments and likes and there'll be another Car Guys episode along next week.